lost in the world like me. I know I certainly am. Why hello there, morning, afternoon, whatever, I'm Sketch, and today I'm gonna talk about animation. How original. Ah, the 2010s, what a nice time, what an interesting time. The internet was still kind of a wild west, but there was now social media for the crazy whatnot going down to propagate and spread on. A lot of internet things that we know and love today cropped up around this time. Live streaming, armchair film critics, gaming videos, Twitter, filthy Frank, internet animation, oh, see what I did there. The reason I wanted to make this video is I was kind of sitting around, I was I was wasting time procrastinating doing schoolwork. I was watching some stuff and whatnot, as per usual, and I stumbled across a bunch of people talking about an animator known as Steve Cutts. Now, my experience with Steve Cutts is somewhat limited, or at least it was before I started making this video, uh, then it was not. Steve Cutts is an intriguing figure. He's been an animator and an illustrator for a while. This guy, if you aren't aware of who he is, he's actually pretty well acclaimed. He's got like multiple awards and shit. He's got 18.1 million subscribers on YouTube. He's got an official website like all the cool kids do nowadays. The first time I can remember seeing his work was a few years ago. It's this short film called Happiness, which is an interesting piece. There's there's things to say and we'll we'll say them. We'll get there. But being an animation fan, uh, I do like me some short little short films on Yoldi Teletube now and then. So naturally I stumbled across this in my recommended. I watched it and it didn't really stick with me that well. I went about my day, I didn't really think about it much more, but over the past few years, discussion has kind of reignited around Steve's work, especially this music video he made for the Moby and the Void Choir song, Are You Lost in the World Like Me? I know I certainly am. Honestly, kind of a banger, but sadly the short is not. There are also shorter versions with various types of royalty-free and or public domain music. This is typically the type of thing that teachers will play for their class, so instead of creating a cohesive lesson where students are encouraged to think and talk about the positives and negatives of our modern world and how we interact with it, a teacher can just slap one of the many variations of this glorious fun on the old projector and make everyone write a three-paragraph essay about it, so they can fuck around on the phone and play something like Raid Shadow Legend. Don't worry, my channel's not big enough for any types of sponsorships. Yet. This is your cue to subscribe. But yeah, our boy Steve here has made a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff, a lot of things. We are going to look at them, but before we begin, I want to make two statements. First of all, a little bit of a content warning here. Steve's animations are edgy, but in talking about them, I briefly mentioned some things like so, full disclosure there. Secondly, don't harass Steve, or anyone else I mention in this video. We're just taking a look here. We're just making some scientific observations. We're having a little bit of fun, as it were. So going out of your way to bully anyone for no reason other than them just doing their own thing on the internet, even if it is kind of cringy, just makes you look like a loser with no life and no pitches. <laughs> with that being said, Steve's IMDB lists his first film as In the Fall. It came out in 2011, and it's not terrible, I guess. There's a depressed-looking guy watering some depressed-looking plants on top of a depressed-looking building in a depressed-looking city. Us relatable, am I right, boys? He trips on an annoyingly obvious banana peel and starts plummeting to his death. This video has no hope of ever being monetized. The way that he falls off is kind of played off as a dark humor joke, but it's not very funny. It's not very comedically satisfying, and I think that's due to the pacing being a little choppy and the animation being a little jank, which is going to become a theme, as you shall see. But yeah, this could have been handled a little bit better. As this guy is falling to his inevitable doom, his life flashes before his eyes. And the way that this is handled is a bunch of birds fly in, holding a projector and a screen, and they play a highlights reel of his life, which, let me say. If my death is preceded by a fucking clip show, I need to find the key to immortality and fast. Although I do love the way it starts. It's fairly obvious. He begins as a child with vim and vigor and happiness and slowly becomes a depressed adult with a stagnant meaningless job and no bitches. The reel ends and he's just like, well, time to fucking die, I guess. There's no after credit scene or any of that shit. Just the audio of his body planting itself three and a half feet in the concrete below as innocent passes by scream an eternal traumatized horror. <laughs> How fun. As far as I can extrapolate, the short focuses on how life sometimes becomes miserable, and yeah, that's about it. This seems to be more of an oddly elaborate vent post. I'm sure that won't happen again. I imagine Steve likely was, and possibly still is, working a boring, meaningless, dead-end office job to support himself while he focuses on his art. Understandable, a tale as old as time, sadly. Now maybe you could use that to say something about capitalism, or greed, or corporate structure, the result of living in a reward-based society, or even maybe money as a concept, and that might be really interesting. That might make people People think. That's some free ideas there for you to steal. But in the fall doesn't have any of that. A guy's depressed, he falls off a building, and he fucking dies. That's about it. The animation suggests that this fellow gets to 50, exactly, which means Steve was kind of writing over his head here, because according to his IMDB, he's 28 right now. Granted, I don't think that's true at all, since that would mean he would have had to have graduated college and started his professional career at about 14? Who knows, maybe we got a regular Hiro Hamada on our hands. But he went freelance in 2012, a year after he made this short, which means he was 16 
Thirteen. <laughs> well, I'll take that animation meme community. <laughs> Steve Katz is very proud to be inspired by 1920s animation, the kind of rubber hose type deal. And that's great. I love the 1920s animation style, but other than a somewhat distinctive stylistic choice, I'm not sure what it achieves here exactly. Maybe Katz is trying to say that he thinks society is not improved for a hundred years? Possibly, but he breaks away from the style in shorts with similar plot lines and theming and uses it in others that don't. So I don't think that's the case. The only conclusion I can come to is he likes the way it looks, so he uses it sometimes, which is valid and something I even do myself, but this is based on the first type of animation that ever existed. You could say something with that, you could do something with that. And Steve kind of sells himself short by not, especially since the 1920s illusion kind of gets shattered when you see a mid-2011 27-inch iMac aluminium sitting on the guy's desk, making him hate himself. Although I'm not gonna lie, if this was the computer my company I worked for supplied me with, I would have to go on a fucking rampage. Katz tends to make very nihilistic material, and in the interviews that he has, he talks about how his work is satire, and not leafy as here type, oh this is just satire, and that kind of shit, but more so actual satire that focuses on an aspect of society and mocks it. The problem with these little epithets is that they don't really add anything to the conversation, they just make you forcefully nose as hell sometimes, and then make you feel bad about yourself. A winning combination. When you look on Steve's YouTube channel, you can find a trailer for what I assume is an unfinished project. It looks to be a short about that one couple who has constant arguments, we all know the one. Everything starts off fine, until it's not. It's not really a short per se, it's a trailer, but it does give us a decent glimpse of what the final project would have been. From what I can extrapolate, these two people try to love each other, they fail, and they destroy everyone and everything around them. <laughs> yeah, I also hate those Godzilla tier breakups that demolish Manhattan every weekend, such a fucking pain. I like how self-awareness is portrayed here, and I think that it does capture the nature of the way that a lot of people try to one-up each other in an argument and say things they don't mean. Steve's also ahead of his time here as well, combining 2D and 3D animation styles. It's very dynamic, but also understandable. The stylization means you can get away with no motion blur, and there's a little bit of robotic movement here and there, but that's what I would expect for the time, and it makes the look and feel really capture this cool 2010s internet horror animation vibe that feels like it could be a small-time ARG if it was made over the last couple of years. The music is this very 2012 hard dubstep that gets a little annoying at times, but I guess fits really well, actually, for this context. This being said, it's still a little surface level. You know, arguing is bad, no one likes to be in an argument. Okay, fucking obviously. Looking at Steve's story, 2012 is the point where he becomes a freelance artist, so it makes sense that he would kind of branch out and make something a little edgier and personal. I don't know what this film would have been, and from the trailer, it seems to very clearly be a Steve Cutts original, so take that as you will, but it would have been very interesting to see what this would have been had it been able to come to fruition. Now we come to Man, and Man is definitely the most infamous and famous of Steve's videos, at least on YouTube. 63 million views over the course of the past decade. That's almost YouTube music numbers. Pretty crazy. Set to the Kevin MacLeod Creative Commons version of In the Hall of the Mountain King by Greg, Man is a short about all the bad things that people do to the world around them. Although, as a commenter pointed out, he does shear a sheep at one point, which is a good D because wool is heavy and uncomfortable. Although, I suppose you could also say that this is the direct result of sheep being selectively bred to produce more wool. It actually kind of just proves the point there, never mind. This is one of the more surface level of Steve Cutts animations. A guy just kind of falls out of the fucking sky and starts destroying the environment. It ends with him sitting on a throne of garbage with a tub of off-branded KFC spelled FCK. Uh, yeah, Steve really hates KFC for some reason, and if you keep your eyes peeled, you'll get a friendly reward because this shows up as a running gag in his videos pretty frequently. The short makes use of some disturbing imagery in a very Peter-like manner, which, as a vegan myself, leaves a really bad taste in my mouth. It ends with aliens coming down and beating the ever-loving shit out of the guy and turning him into a welcome mat. And the entire time, the Flash animation is just fucking falling apart. It's really not good. <laughs> it's like someone watched the 2012 Lorax movie with <laughs> fucking Danny DeVito and tried to rewrite the Dr. Seuss classic with no story, royalty avoidance characters, and a three and a half minute runtime. Yeah, there's not much to be said here, as some other people have broken this down far better than I ever could hope to have. Once again, playlist in the description. Watch this video first though, because I'm greedy. But yeah, it's the same classic nihilistic thing bad, but this week's villain of the week is all of humankind. How lovely. It never suggests that we could not be this way sometimes. No attacks on the roots of the issues that caused this kind of shit on the first place, never mind all the efforts that have been put in to combat the very real issues that this short is pointing out. It's just a complaint on the nature of human society as far as Steve sees it. I wonder if he thinks this doom mentality is helpful in some way, like if we all hate ourselves enough and think we're all gonna fucking die, we might push harder for better climate policies or less animal cruelty, and maybe to an extent that might be true, and it might work, I suppose. But don't you think it would be better to just be transparent about the issues at hand to see where we are and what we can realistically do, rather than just blindly pushing for one thing as hard as we can out of fear? If you want to make a point like this, it should be transparent, measured, and reasonable. Otherwise, 
is he'll just preach to the choir, tell people things they already know, and the people who need to hear the message won't take it seriously. Man, the short, does not exist to suggest change or reach out to the appropriate channels, it just serves to complain in a way that your uncle can repost it on Facebook with some type of relatable minions image. Next on Steve's channel is Duck Hunting, an entry for e 4 esting which is some type of animation advertising competition type deal, I guess, I don't know, but as far as I can tell, Steve was actually a finalist here, which is actually really cool, good for him. This video takes a very anti-hunting stance, which is pretty based. Animal welfare is a major theme that Steve explores in his subsequent works, but it comes second or third to the overall appearance here. A lot of people in the comments are saying that Steve should collaborate with Syriac. Now, if you don't know or don't remember, Syriac is this animator who makes and made these really crazy, weird, fucking acid trips of experiences of animations, which I absolutely love, by the way, complete chad. But yeah, this short is a very Syriac-like in its vibes, and I wonder if Steve was possibly drawing inspiration? Maybe. Not even a bad thing, really. Uh, but I do think this is one of Cut's animations that stands out visually speaking, at least in his earlier work. Not a short, but I figured I'd mention it. Why not? The strangest thing Steve ever made is Anytime is Ice Cream Time, which is the most artistic of his work. Steve is really trying new things with his palette here. We get a lot of bright, overbearing colors. Everyone is an ice cream cone except for the uh, except for the human children, which we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get there in a minute. But, you know, a, li a little ice cream man, little ice cream woman, little ice cream cone of non-binary orientation, who knows, is trying to cross the street and almost gets hit by a truck. Uh, in the meanwhile, there's this group of other sentient frozen treats, you know, hitting the fucking gritty to pixel peek a polka faster by Kevin MacLeod, which brings back no memories at all. I don't remember anything about this. It rings no bells. And then all of a sudden, this this kid, this human child, comes right the fuck out of nowhere and bites off the guy's head. His lifeless corpse falls to the ground bleeding, and one of the cones tries to perform <laughs> CPR as the third cone has a has a fucking panic attack, I think? This knocks out the sentient decoration straw on the back of their head, which is a disturbing concept to think about for more than two seconds. And then they fucking kill themselves. <laughs> a candy dog is taking a candy shit in the background, and we aren't even a minute in, ladies and gentlemen. We cut back to the first cone, waiting to cross the road, and even though it's been like six fucking hours, they still almost get hit by the same truck from before, but slightly recolored. We cut back to the crime scene, and I'm- I'm not even gonna try to describe this, I'm gonna just play it. You can't not see this shit for yourself, man. <laughs> You know, it's very rare that I am at a complete loss for words. But what the fuck am I even supposed to say here? Like what? Dealing with the loss of their friends. Uh... The sole survivor of the incident is grieving near the edge of a cliff, and I swear I thought they were gonna commit a Bonnie and Clyde. Good god. But what we get is even better, yay! They're driving along, just going about the, the sad, sad way on this sad, sad day, and an ice cream truck pulls up alongside them, playing an ear rape version of Yankee Doodle Dandy, which is very pleasant to listen to. Inside are some new friends! Hooray! Dancing to the same music as before? How fun! Get out of my head, 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 get out of my head! So they're driving, they're dancing, they're jamming, they're also not paying attention to the road, and they hit the cone, who has been trying to cross from before for like, probably an entire week now, maybe a month. They fucking splatter across the windscreen, and despite the horror of what they've just witnessed multiple times, the survivor cone turns on their windscreen wipers, and is smearing the corpse of this other cone all around his windscreen. They swerve and hit the ice cream truck, and it flips, leaving a colorful pout of iridescent death on the highway. All the time, Pixel Pika Polka is playing over all of this. It does not let up. It does not stop. And I gotta say, man, I feel for you, bro. You deserve better. There's a cool plus ability of survivor's guilt moment of silence. And then a bus of screaming human children show up and start eating the dying ice cream directly off the asphalt in the goriest detail possible. As Pixel Pika Polka relentlessly continues, I said that wrong, I know. I'm not going back. Fuck you. This goes on for way too long. The survivor gets picked up and presumably consumed? The final scene is this little decoration straw who's in a padded cell now, which honestly Honestly, I think I, I need one myself, good god. Okay, so after a solid month of deliberation, I think the best meaning I can possibly extrapolate from this is no matter what horrible things are going down on a personal level with a single person or a small group of people, the world just continues on with cold and uncaring, no matter what type of cheerful music we try to put over it. More likely than not, I'm overthinking it and Steve is just having some fun being weird and edgy and like epic random, which was common for the time, but with a horror twist, actually kind of creative if you think about it, but my god can you not unsee this once you've watched it, especially if you've watched it over 10 fucking times. Up next is What a Hunt, which is the lowest rated of Steve's work, at least on IMDb, and is the most transparently 
venti of his animations. It's also the poorest, just from an art standpoint alone, because Steve tries to parody art styles from a bunch of other cartoons and animated movies, which I suppose I can give him an E for effort, but I'm sorry, this just does not look good. I know it's deliberately trying to be bad, but still, oh god, why does it always have to come back to the Lion King? Plot-wise, there's really nothing here. A poorly animated character goes about shooting various cartoon animals from classic animated films and TV series. The survivors of this carnage band together and demolish Hunter Melissa Bachman with assault rifles and Kalashnikov. Once again, based, but why? Admittedly though, I do like how the sloth leans in to clean the camera lens as she gets blown away. Now, as far as I understand, this is roughly based on a celebrity who went hunting in Africa and there's a big public scandal about it. Okay, there are plenty of injustices and atrocities caused by hunters the world over, and I agree, that's pretty cringe, that's not very based. But I'm not really sure what making a full-ass animation about it really achieves, per se. Don't you think it would have been better to do something along the lines of maybe put a lot of effort into making a creative, meaningful short film that gets a lot of attention and a lot of money and donating a portion, if not all of it, to a legitimate charity that strives to benefit animal welfare in those areas, or just in general? It's clear that Steve cares about these issues, but this short doesn't really make anyone's situation any better. Now, granted, this is a bit of a low point in Steve's career, so let's see what comes next. Moving right along, we have Where Are They Now, which is an interesting idea. Basically, Steve's imagining the depressing, neutral ending fate of beloved cartoon characters, now retired or just out of their prime. I suppose that some might be a little put off by the design of Jessica Rabbit, who is the star and narrator of this shot. I'm not even going to touch that debate with a 10-foot pole, but there you have it. This is actually some of Steve's funnier work, and despite the animation being a little janky, it lends itself to the overall disgustingness of what the world has become for the icons it stars. We see the return of FCK. All Jessica seems to do nowadays is spend all her money on fried chicken and watch TV. I like how Roger jumps up to watch sports every time she leaves. I also love how unabashedly gay He-Man has become. Slay Queen. Steve is getting better at capturing the styles of animation he's satirizing, and seeing the over powered superheroes of the 80s fucking around in a grocery store like children is quite entertaining. Steve's sense of comedic timing is getting better, and he also voices all of the characters in the short. Honestly, he's pretty good. The ending is very odd in classic Steve Cut's fashion, but I think it's worth a watch, so I will leave it unspoiled and linked in the description if you find yourself interested. Maybe I'm a little biased after watching a large amount of Steve's earlier not-as-good work, but yeah, despite clearly writing not being one of Steve's fortes, this is definitely one of the higher points as far as his humor is concerned. Now we come to the walk home, and this is where Steve is trying to experiment more with some more serious and darker themes. We open on a cold, empty city where a street kid is being bullied and beaten in a rough area. This is represented by a bunch of dynamic illustrations that kind of look like those trippy boxes for hard cider you buy at Target. I think this is trying to say that uh, because of what he's seen, the kid here thinks that everyone is an inhuman monster who thirsts only for money and destruction and power. It's pretty par for the course for Steve, lots of nihilism, lots of violence. Uh, this goes on for too long in my opinion. Like, we get the fucking point already, Jesus. Now, when the short starts out, most would think this is an ordinary cuts animation, but then it takes a turn. In running away, the boy heads down an alleyway, and in this cold, empty space, he finds himself standing over his corpse. Another nameless innocent who deserved to live and didn't. The ghost of past victims come out to greet the boy and accept him. He looks around and he sees the evil peeling off the living people around him, and his perception starts to change. He realizes there is more to everyone than what he sees, and finally, he must confront what I assume is the person who killed him? Maybe not. It might just be a general evil guy. But then the music becomes foreboding. The figure turns away, and the short ends. I really like this one. Steve finally takes his work seriously and tries to become less surface level. I think the more typical Steve cutsiveness, if you will, could have been cut down significantly at the start. I think he was trying to work within the confines of the runtime of the song, which works very well during the end, but really starts to drag in the first half. The way the animation moves sometimes can take away from some scenes, but in others it feels like an uncanny dream, which works really well. Well, this kind of reminds me of the New Divide music video, actually. The entire thing is in Steve's classic black, white, and yellow, and it's utilized very effectively here. The music is perfect. It has this kind of chilly, urban feel that fits with the animation just perfectly. Steve's work is improving, and with these past two successes, one might even be led to believe that this means a change in the right direction. Right? I think the best way to describe happiness is... Intriguing? After taking a three-year hiatus from making short films, which we'll come back to, don't worry, Steve returns with this. The animation has improved, and it's really fitting for the world the characters inhabit. In some cases, it levels up quite a bit as well. Like this pure original frame-by-frame -frame animation fully colored on ones, it's really impressive. There's even a decent laugh here and there. We get some nice dynamic shots that are very, very cool to look at. Hell, he won two awards for this short. It's the second most popular video on his channel. But there are also issues here that I would be remiss not to address. After drinking 
talking himself into a stupor. A little rat main character goes to, presumably, a doctor and gets prescribed antidepressants. They provide a bit of relief, but it's short-lived, and it only makes a fakery of our main character's reality. He comes crashing down from his high, continues following money, and we got our final scene. Very clever. But this is the main qualm that a lot of people have with this short, and man can I see why. I'm not a doctor by any stretch of the imagination, and I don't claim to be, but I do have my own similar issues to this. I've been on medications before that did not help me at all, or outright made things worse, and I can understand how someone with depression might feel like their life on antidepressants is the equivalent of living a lie. But this film completely ignores how important medication can be for some people, especially for an issue like depression. I have family members who have anger disorders, and when they don't take their meds, well guess what fucking happens? Steve just lumps medication in with the rest of the corporatized fakery, the short marks, and I know a lot of people are not impressed with the nature of large pharmaceutical companies, but there's more nuance to the situation here, and Steve only provides his own subjective opinion. I mean, opinions are what drive people to make art in the first place, but this is strayed from a discussion on the nature of society and capitalism, and more into something that could be realistically misinterpreted to someone as a call to stop taking the fucking medication. And that's not good. I don't think that Steve meant it this way, but yeah, I can see how this is more than a bad look. Happiness is such an interesting short film. All of an artist works are little windows into their minds, and happiness is certainly far from an exception to this. On the surface level, it says something about the endless drag of work leading to blind consumerist escapism, which requires more money, which requires more work, which leads to more consumerism, an endless cruel cycle where everyone is miserable. I know that sounded like something Jimmy Kimmel would say, that's kind of a point. But happiness is more than that. It makes a point, yes, but mostly it tells us about how Steve looks at the world. I've been using nihilistic a lot here, but I think you can fucking understand why. Throughout the short, we see a cynical mockery of the things that most people enjoy, reduced to corporatized dishonesty. And as true as this can sometimes be, I wonder if this is the only way that Steve is able to view the world around him anymore. Don't get me wrong, it's a pretty dead-on representation of what having depression is like. Trust me, I would know. But as much as I criticize this short for its problems, I gotta ask, man, Steve, really, are you okay, bro? <laughs> Now, I started scripting this video in early September, but it's now looking like it will release sometime after Christmas. Who knows, maybe I'm being a little pessimistic. So I suppose the next topic is a little more fitting. A small trailer created as a personal project. Fear the Deer is an animated take on the classic violent Christmas horror movie. Same animation issues here and there, but god damn is Steve able to capture a fearful uncanniness at times. Sometimes he actually means it. As far as I can extrapolate, the premise of this theoretical film is Anthro Dom Daddy Rudolph Ooh Woo is sick and tired of being rejected by his redneck peers, so he goes about picking them off one by one. I think the narration is a little weak at times, and some animation issues as I said before, but I still actually like the premise, I think it would be fun. It's not the highest rated of Steve's work, and I can see why, but this is clearly meant to be taken less seriously, and it's a decent example of how to make a genre satire trailer as well. Now, I admit, I kind of omitted a portion of Steve's complete works, I've been talking about his filmography and what's available on his YouTube channel, but during the three year hiatus Steve took from making short films films back from 2014 to 2017, he was getting gigs doing animation and even directing other exterior ventures. The Water Rooms, which despite its title is not an expanded ARG, but instead a short about water. How we get it, where it comes from, really gives off early Kyrgyzat vibes actually. We all need water. Nuclear war could trigger a nuclear winter that might kill billions. Apart from the visual animation jank here and there, it actually serves to educate as opposed to just complain, and it does that pretty effectively. Some might see it as a little preachy, kinda like me, but it's pretty ahead of its time for 2014. Wake Up Call is a video about the endless march of technology. Some animation's decent, some animation's kinda jank, but it's pretty based, actually, in some parts. It was commissioned, I guess, by the Gaia Foundation, who has their fair share of controversies, and I'm not even gonna get into that, good god. I believe there's a corporate casket on that one. But yeah, it's not bad, it actually addresses the issues at hand in an understandable manner. But after all of this, Cuts gets a gig. A large gig. A gig that's still going on today. And that gig is a gig with Moby. And Moby is, among other things, an artist and animal rights activist. So it only makes sense he would collaborate with Steve Cuts on a lot of music videos. And this collaboration is what eventually leads to Are You Lost in the World Like Me? And yeah, yeah, we'll get there soon. But the reason I'm bringing this up, well, leading up to this, Steve has been returning to his more activist roots. And I imagine this is by the request of Moby. His short films from the 
the time are actually pretty decent, but his animated music videos are what tend to get more attention and scrutiny for understandable reasons. I'm not going to really divulge too deeply into the AMVs that Steve has made and continues to make for Moby. Each one is pretty much par for, as, as Steve goes, and Moby is his, his whole own kind of worms. But the point of this is, you can clearly see the influence bleeding into Cut's next film, The Turning Point. When this film started, I thought it was going to be some type of cool, uh, like, one final bottle leads to trash causing the planet to fucking explode or some shit like that. And the way that it starts, and the title, might lead you to believe that. But here, that's not the case. It's a film about pollution, but the roles are reversed. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Greed, apathy, conspiracy, and consumerism lead humans to eventually becoming extinct. It's everything you might expect Steve to do in a Moby video, except it's his own short film. Steve already has three awards under his belt at this point, and as far as I can tell, he hasn't won any more, but it does feel like he's kind of fishing for what worked the last time. I suppose Steve is trying to pull on our heartstrings by making the humans suffer in place of the animals, but I'm sorry, I just can't feel sympathy for characters who look like this. It's ironic how Steve still draws humans as horrifyingly as possible, even though they are ultimately the victims here. See, Steve normally draws people to look more disturbing, and animals as innocents caught in a bad situation. And it's the same appearance here, but the animals are the ones in the wrong, and it feels less like a meaningful artistic choice, and more like Steve is just trying to punish the humans as much as possible, no matter what situation they're in. Now this is one of the better statement shorts Steve has made. It is a little venti, yes, but it actually addresses some of the roots of the issues. But it is, for the better or the worse, undeniably the work of Steve Cutts. During the lockdowns, Steve didn't have that much to do, presumably, as he turned out another animation in just four months. Man 2020 is the sequel to the 2012 original, and it takes inspiration from how nature flourished while people were forced to stay inside. Although this wasn't entirely true, seriously watch the Glocal Weirdo video, it's amazing. After this, because I'm greedy. There's actually a little humor here and there, and the timing of the jokes is better. Uh, if you have no context, you might not fully get this, but it's a fun little sequel. Uh, Steve's animation is still improving, uh, and man, you know, the man, still has some amount of awkward jank to him, but I think at this point, it's a deliberate creative choice. The music cuts very annoyingly, for time reasons, and I understand that there's time limitations, but my god does my brain hate the way that these chords don't line up properly in the context of the original song. It is marginally better than the original, and gets one or two forceful nose exhales out of ten. Why did I say that like it was a rating? <laughs> The newest thing Steve has uploaded is A Brief Disagreement, and it's pretty good actually. See, the interesting thing about A Brief Disagreement is it's entirely filmed, or animated to be filmed, in one shot. 1917 could never. And it is entirely frame by frame. It's fluid, it's dynamic, it's set to some badass music. It really reminds me of the first light actually, which is a plus in my opinion. The world around the humans changes, but the humans never evolve, remaining in their Neanderthal form. And yes, I've watched enough gutsick Gibeon to know that humans and Neanderthals were entirely different species, and eventually Neanderthals died off, but they kind of analogous here. The pacing is really good. The timing on some of the jokes is quite humorous, but I love the way that it starts off as a disagreement over the largest gold nugget. Like, there's more gold on the ground, enough to be shared, but almost immediately the nugget is thrown to the side and it becomes a fight for fighting's sake. In the end, the two Neanderthals come out of hiding in their bunkers, and you might think that they make up, but they don't. The sad music continues, and so does the fight. And I get that it's sad that these two will never stop fighting or whatever, but I think that Steve kind of misses his mark. I think he kind of misreads the room here. It would have been a whole lot funnier if there was just no music. With that being said, it's got the usual cuts nihilism, as people have pointed out. Not all wars were equally as pointless, but yeah, this is, in my opinion, some of Steve's best work, at least animation-wise. The whole thing is just well done. And with that, we've pretty much covered Steve's entire filmography. With one exception. Ooh, Brian. Ooh, ooh, Brian. I don't like all these people on their phones, Brian. I want them to pay attention to me, Brian. Ooh. Okay, so, I admit, I've been putting this off. It is now time. Time to talk about Are You Lost in the World Like Me? Are you? Maybe. I guess there's only one way to find out! God, I hate the fact the title of this song is a question. Okay, so back near the end of Steve's hiatus from short films, around late 2016, you might remember he was making animations for Moby. This animation got released as an AMV and a separate short. Shorts. Eat my shorts. This is the reason. This video is is the reason why a lot of people don't like Steve Cuts. It's overplayed in schools, I guess, but mostly it's more so an epic I'm 14 and this is deep type situation. According to IMDb, Cuts directs the videos he makes for Moby, so I don't think that this was much to do with Moby's input, but more so Steve himself. And yeah, it has it, it has a very Steve cuts ness to it. And yes, I am going to start using that word in my regular vocabulary now. Bite me. Daddy. We open with our titular main character standing in the middle of a square with a bunch of randos pushing around him on their phones. Phone bad. Phone 
bad. Phone very bad. These fucking idiots falling into an open sewer, walking around like zombies, having a having a grand old time, being depressed as it were. A bunch of people are recording an act of police brutality against Mickey Mouse. A bunch of people are hanging around on their phone in the subway. And I mean, how is that a bad thing? Like, what the fuck is that to do on the subway? I've only rid the subway a few times, and I had a shit ton of fun because I was a kid, and I never ridden the subway before. But when you ride the damn thing every day, hell, a lot of these people are probably just trying to mind their own business and not get beat up. The kid bumps into some people, and they turn into demons. But these people aren't even on their phones. Maybe Steve's trying to say that technological overusage can make a lot of people angry for no reason. But in this bubble universe, you're either on your phone or you're not, and they're not. So why is this bad? The kid sees a guy harassing a woman on the subway and has a fantasy about beating the shit out of him because all conflicts are best solved with violence. But it's clear that he would only do this for the approval of the people around him, which is what the rest of the people are doing anyway, just on their phones. There's this really stupid scene where the kid is sitting on the sidewalk, a puppy comes up and starts licking him and being all cute and shit, and a random guy just fucking kicks the dog for no reason. It's supposed to be taken seriously, but I just can't. There's a girl out on a date with some stupid, boring nerd, and she just kind of swipes through guys she doesn't like until she finds someone who's conventionally attractive, because as we all know, it's unnatural for people to be choosy, I guess. And I mean, yeah, it sucks to be that guy, but still, this is not a problem with technology. That's just the dating world. Who hurt you? These eyes on devices at all times signs, I fucking swear. That's fine. Oh my god. So now we see the kid running around trying once again to get the attention and approval of his peers, and you know, you just fucking know this little bastard got his grubby little mitts on a phone. He would be the most annoying attention-grabbing little shit on social media. This one girl does an embarrassing bad dance and copy-pasted people mock her for it. Pay attention to this class because it comes up again. Just you wait and see. A bunch of people are worshipping someone for getting implants. I guess this is supposed to be a bad thing. What does this have to do with technology? Hey, remember Sleeping Beauty? She has a phone now! What a- Bitch! Man, I hated that part of the beloved classic 1959 Walt Disney film where Snow White got completely absorbed in her Tumblr Ask Me Anything page. So the girl who is being relentlessly mocked is now about to commit Roblox oof, and everyone just fucking films her doing it. Actually, no, they take pictures! This is complete hog shit! These people would be filming like they did before with the epic police brutality, not filming a pic that violates the terms of service of almost- <clears throat> Not snapping a pic that violates the terms of service of- Damn it! <clears throat> not snapping a pic that violates the terms of service of- God damn it, not snapping a pic that violates the TOS of most major social media websites. But yeah, if somebody actually did this, people would at least try to fucking stop them. There are absolutely times when bullying and trolling have gone too far on many a website and social media app. But this just reduces suicide to a pathos tool on top of being corny as fuck. I do like the design of vintage YouTube though, it's very well done. File compilations have mostly died off nowadays, and if someone wants to make a fool of themselves, they do it on TikTok. But this is very period specific and not at all accurate anymore, but fitting for the time I suppose. It ends with everyone walking off a fucking cliff like lemmings, I guess. Which they actually don't do, by the way! And we end this critique of technological overusage and big money advertisation with a subtle bet to check out the rest of the album. It's also fucking priceless that this song isn't mainstream enough to be on anything but the internet, so the only way to watch this video or hear the song itself is with a computer or phone. I mean, I suppose you could use your Samsung smart fridge, but you get the point. Are You Lost in the World Like Me is absolutely Steve's worst work. I do like the fake Instagram white woman pretending her life is perfect when clearly it's not, and the restaurant full of people taking pictures of their meals for Instagram that no one gives a single fuck about. All the stuff you would expect to see lying around is error appropriate for the early 20th century. Steve does a good job of really capturing the 20s style he's going for, at least <laughs> whenever the video is paused, but this gets immediately smeared by the fact that everyone has iPhone 7s and Note 5s. Once again, it's just a stylistic choice that doesn't make any sense other than being something that Steve likes. It's not utilized in any way, it's just there. I recall people comparing this to that stupid storm a video from Carmen, which seriously, leave poor Carmen alone already, guys, holy shit. But the Twitter bird ruins a guy's life and literally turns him into feces. God, there's people skibbity gooning to this right now, aren't there? But yeah, this, this just ain't it, chief. Well, this was an ambitious video to make. At a certain point, I knew that I was going to be looking into a guy's entire filmography, but I didn't expect it to take this long. I put Are You Lost in the World Like Me on my review radar the 1st of September, just less than a month after the Kuma review. I knew this was going to be more than a wait, but this was so much more ambitious than I initially realized, good god. It didn't help that it was interspersed between school, so uh, there's another excuse for you to process. I know that Steve really does care about the things he makes shorts about. Looking at his illustrations, 
emotions, he's a talented artist, and he does have things to say. I can understand his feeling of being lost in the world sometimes, but not in the same way that he seems to be. Maybe this will change for me in 10, 15 years, who knows, but right now, it's the focus of a lot of Steve's content, and I think that it's been stale for a long time now. Now I realize that making a video complaining about this guy, complaining about things I agree with him on for the most part, is more than a little bit hypocritical, so I would be remiss not to try to make this a little more worthwhile and constructive than I think thing bad, wah. A lot of people don't fuck with Steve's work because it is venti, it's edgy, the animation, when it doesn't look good, does not look good, and Steve takes his work so seriously that a lot of people end up cringing pretty hard at what he makes. I went out of my way to ask some people on various film-related Discord servers what they thought of Steve's work, and the general consensus was sub-mediocre to outright bad. There was this one guy on the YMS server who said, I'm afraid his Luddite screeds are too deep for my shriveled little electronics adult brain. Thanks for listening. I must get back to browsing the TikToks. <laughs> God, I want to print that out and hang it on my wall. He seems to have these weird self-hatred fantasies that he turns into vent posts like this, and using his struggles to create art is perfectly valid, but people are going to get turned away when 65% of your filmography is edgelord vent posting. Like, even his channel avatar is a guy screaming about how much he hates his job. Steve wants to be an activist, and maybe he has swayed a tiny amount of people away from some things that are harmful to the planet and to humanity and shit like that, but as a whole, this is not activism. It's slacktivism. It's the kind of thing that's only possible to do if you have a large following on social media, ironically enough, which is another thing that people aren't going to like. It's the equivalent of slapping a snarky bumper sticker on your 2007 Toyota Corolla and pretending like you made a difference. All that does, however, is make the people who agree with you agree with you, the people who disagree with you disagree with you, and nothing of value is set or achieved. If you want to make a difference, do something. Donate, lobby, educate people on how we can fix the things that need attention. Another major reason I think that Steve pisses so many people off is he takes the role of a passive observer, and a lot of times it feels like he expects everyone else to do the heavy lifting while he gets the recognition for making surface level observations. These shorts take a problem, point to it, maybe make some entertaining epithets sometimes, but mostly make you feel bad and self-conscious without suggesting a solution or making an argument for change. I think Steve sometimes spends too much time on the animation, and he doesn't have time to make the writing or extrapolation of deeper meanings a priority, especially since he's a one-man team as far as I can tell. Actually, no. Moby looks over his music videos that he makes, I would imagine, and that's some of his more infamous stuff. Okay, maybe he needs some other people looking over what he makes. Since there's no dialogue or voice acting in most of his stuff, basic emotions are all that he tends to portray. Now, you can do a lot with this, and it can let you hit a larger common audience, that's true, but it also makes for limitations in how effectively you can divulge into specifics, which Cuts rarely does. I think he started off making edgy humor posts that he found funny in his newfound freelance freedom, but as time went on, he became more nihilistic and this reflected heavily in his work. He's now found an audience of boomers and doomers who don't really think about the things he's trying to say outside of relatability and collectivized fear. And the thing is, when Steve strikes out on his own and does something creative, it can be really cool. You can even see some of his better roots coming back with the wry humor found in his newest stuff. That being said, we are complicit in his nihilism to an extent. Are you lost in the world like me? Won an award. Happiness won too. I think the best thing that we can do is vote with your likes. Vote with your views. Show Steve how much his craft is appreciated when he really tries. When he's original, Steve is capable of making impressive things, and if you watch and share his better and more meaningful works, I think he'll reward us with more. I was debating whether or not to rate all of Steve's works as I went through them, and I decided to not. I'm sure this video has swayed your view on this topic to some extent. It is transformative content after all. However, I would recommend that you check out Steve's works for yourself if you really want to form a more unbiased opinion. Once again, don't give Steve or anyone else I mentioned any hate or grief over any of this. I think that most Mostly, he could do with a healthier outlook on life, something that's helped me quite a bit. Maybe talk to a therapist, as we all should, and perhaps this time for a break to get his priorities straight. Steve Cutts is, dare I say, a good illustrator, and a good animator when he really tries. And I think the quicker he moves from the past, the better his craft will become. I wish him the best of luck. W-A-V, it's a wave file. Oh, but it's pronounced WAV. Kelly is- It's me, Mickey Mouse, sticking out your dead for the wrestler. That's right, you're so scary. It's me, you're so bad, I'm kind of- I kind of want to know. I just want to be your simple. That's me, freaking Kelly.